Hello, how are you? In this video we will see why is category theory considered controversial among mathematicians. This video is brought to you by the Question Response Channel. Today Andrew Winkler, Bertrand Granier, Colin Reed and Ryan Reich are going to present their answers to us. Let's see Andrew Winkler's first answer. Dyson describes a dichotomy of mathematicians, which he terms birds and frogs. This obviously mirrors the abstract, concrete description of personalities in general described, for example, by Kiersey. Controversy isn't quite the right word. There are mathematicians who enthusiastically embrace the insights that category theory offers. There are mathematicians who complain that the machinery of category theory isn't useful, or at least not needed, for proving anything in their particular sub-subspecialty. For example, the adjoint functor theorem can be used to generate all kinds of free objects. But every one of those free objects can be directly constructed, and the direct construction has a concreteness that might be useful. The conversation isn't really about correctness, it's about relevance. T. Access this answer and support the author as a Quora Plus subscriber. Access all answers reserved by Andrew Winkler. For Quora Plus subscribers. Access exclusive answers from thousands more participating creators in Quora Plus. Browse ad free and support creators. Start free trial. Learn more. The following answer is from Bertrand Granier. As previous answers rightly pointed, category theory is not at all controversial as a mathematical theory. It gives tools to spot mathematical phenomena which are omnipresent in maths and cannot be spotted otherwise. For instance, the notion of functor unifies a lot of constructions that were done in fields as varied as topology, geometry and logic. Adjunctions are another example of mathematical phenomenon that is omnipresent. For example, the set theoretic product and disjoint union are adjunctions, but also quantifiers can be seen as adjoint functors, as Lorvier pointed out. Now categorical foundations are another matter. The idea of unifying mathematics through category theory has been seen as useless and misleading by a great number of mathematicians. Indeed, mathematical education makes such a great use of set theory as a unifying and descriptive language since the 19th century, that we tend to view it as the foundation of mathematics, the theory that expresses what mathematical objects really are, some kind of set theoretic Platonism in fact. However, it is possible to think otherwise. In particular, if one has more of a structuralist point of view in mathematics, then categorical foundations are great because they allow a description of objects without any ontological commitment as regards the nature of objects. There are different ways to define the same object. A group can be seen either as a one-object category where all arrows are invertible, or as a certain structure of arrows pointing to a certain object in a category. Another example, it is possible, via the notion of elementary topos, to view the category of sets as a particular example of topos, well-pointed topos with natural numbers object that verifies the axiom of choice, but there are also other toposes, constructive toposes, intuitionistic toposes, etc. It basically allows to take a far broader view on the world of mathematical structures and study in a common frame classical mathematics and constructive mathematics. We are not bound to classical set theory anymore. There are other approaches using higher category theory, homotopy type theory is an example. Also it is possible to view the category of categories as a two-category. If the goal of mathematics is to describe structures, then maybe category theory can be a useful tool to take a broader view, and might be a more natural instrument than classical set theory. P.S. In a nutshell, mathematical structuralism is the idea that structure comes first, that structure is what is really studied by mathematicians. Maybe we can code these structures in set theoretic constructions, but this does not at all express the true nature of mathematical objects, if such an expression has a meaning. We can continue with Colin Reed's answer. Here's a comment I found by an academic, Walt Pohl, see comments here, being square. That jokingly plays up the controversy in question. The attempt to rewrite the foundations of mathematics in terms of category theory is evil and wrong. It is the fourth great evil we have been called to face down. After Nazism, communism, and Islamofascism, it is our destiny to confront categofascism. I'm not surprised to see D squared on the side of the categofascists. It's not controversial in the sense of not being trusted or recognized as mathematics. There is however something of a cultural divide on the relative importance of category theory to the rest of mathematics. It's a similar story with other areas of maths with foundational ambitions, such as logic theory, set theory and model theory. At the one extreme, category theorists are doing the most important work in pure mathematics, unifying and systematizing the whole subject. Categorical arguments are inherently better than other kinds of proof, with the possible exception of other, foundational, approaches, because of their generality, and if an area of maths hasn't been reformulated in categorical terms yet, it means that subject is immature and hasn't developed a solid theoretical foundation. Every maths PhD student, regardless of their research area, 
should learn a serious amount of category theory in order to do things properly and not get bogged down in irrelevant specifics. At the other extreme, category theorists are just doing abstract nonsense that, when you translate it into a more ordinary mathematical context, is either obvious or irrelevant. There's no point in learning category theory in general, just the odd trick as and when you need it, and even those tricks are just a shorthand for something you could spell out in non-categorical terms. It's better to give a less categorical proof, as it is more concrete and intuitive. A categorical foundation for a subject is unsatisfactory and unhelpful, as it throws away too much basic information about what the morphisms actually look like as equivalence classes of functions. This kind of bias, in either direction, can have a significant effect on hiring decisions and publishing decisions at competitive journals, for instance. As for why it happens, it's very hard to get an objective opinion on the relative importance of one area of mathematics to the rest, especially an area with such a grandiose scope, because nobody, not even someone working in a foundational area, has a firm grasp on the state of mathematics as a whole. So a mathematician's view of what is and isn't useful or important to mathematics as a whole is inevitably colored by parochial experiences of their own speciality, education and habits. We can continue with Ryan Reich's answer. Category theory, in itself, is not controversial. It is just a mathematical theory like any other. It makes no claims as to the philosophy of mathematical foundations like set theoretic theories, including the use of the axiom of choice, or, even more controversially, constructivism, intuitionism, finitism, or ultrafinitism. Any mathematician can use it as a tool, or not, as they like. Well, except for the fact that since its invention in the mid-20th century, category theory has steadily encroached on all areas of mathematics, influencing them with its abstract nonsense, and pushing aside perspectives previously considered concrete and practical, but afterwards considered limited. Algebraic geometry has been completely overtaken, not that I, personally, am complaining, thanks to Grothendieck, and algebraic topology as well, thanks to many others, say, Quillen, whose algebraic K-theory was the first time I'd ever seen category theory used in a serious way and not just as a descriptive language. What really gets some people is its intrusion into non-algebraic fields such as analysis or computer science. Ironically, their objections are the same ones that the old generation of algebraic geometers had when Grothendieck pulled the rug out from under them, but I think those early century mathematicians would have been happy with the reconstruction of the concrete study of their subject on categorical foundations. Joe Harris is the standard example of a classical algebraic geometer using modern methods to go beyond the Italian school on the same problems they would have considered, which is something he has literally said. So I think people who find the abstractification of their subject objectionable are missing the historical lesson that it never subtracts, only adds and redirects. Category theory is not controversial, but sometimes it is erroneously thought to be unwelcome. This is the end of the video. I hope you have more answers. If this answer helps you, please help us too by leaving a like and subscribing to this channel. It allows us to move forward on YouTube. This is now the end of this video. Remember to leave a comment to tell us if these answers resonate with you. Bye and see you soon.